The history of Japan is very, very, very long. It goes back way before what we would maybe consider recorded history. The issue with Japanese history usually is that they don't usually like foreign people coming in and doing any kind of archaeology or anthropology. I would know. I studied archaeology and anthropology in college. I am a uh, college educated archaeologist, anthropologist, and I also majored in Japanese. And it is a lot of, we could say, clashing between Japan and the outside world about its history. One of the reasons being is Japan still has an intact imperial lineage. Going all the way back, they still have all the records going back thousands of years that can trace the ancestry of the Japanese imperial line. And if we go back even farther, we do get people who were maybe considered natives uh, if you go back to something like the Jomon period of Japanese history, we have beautiful clay pots and these beautiful clay figurines, and we're not really sure what exactly happened to those original peoples. The Japanese themselves will say that that, that is the Japanese people. Once you get to the next period up, which is the Yayoi period, we do see lots of evidence of like warfare and things like that. And then we also start getting toward the Heian period, we see influences from China, which is probably around when Go started to appear in Japan. It's really hard to tell. At some point in there, there are these giant earthen structures called Kofun, which look like keyholes. And they're really cool. But the only time we've done some archaeology on them in the open world kind of history, lots of the artifacts that came out of those kind of burial mounds looked Korean. So there may have been some immigration from the Korean peninsula to Japan that then mixed with the indigenous population. And that's where you get the Japanese people as we know them today. But that is kind of a, a, a disagreeable understanding of Japanese history for lots of Japanese people. And the truth and the reality of it is still very unclear. The Japanese imperial lineage itself will still say that they are directly descended from the sun goddess Amaterasu. But after World War II, the Japanese emperor had, had to, to say, I am not a living god. That was one of the decrees that came after at the end of the war is Emperor Hirohito said, I admit that I am not a living god. I am not a god in the flesh. And so we get this really long history and Go has been there for so very long. One of the things that perhaps people don't understand about Japan is that even though this is an island nation and it's a small island nation, it's actually pretty big. If you had to pick between England or Japan, which do you think is bigger? I think a lot of people, like myself when I was growing up in America, would have picked England. We have this image of England being such a busy, innovative country, out doing things, out conquering, right? That it's got to be bigger than isolated, you know, rural, everyone's you know, tiny Japan, but it's not. Japan is much bigger than the United Kingdom. And another thing that lots of people don't know about Japan is it's extraordinarily mountainous. Almost the entire uh, area of all the islands are mountains. There's mountains pretty much anywhere you look. And it's also a subtropical country, which means that there's a lot of green here. There's a lot. Kajiwara Takeo was born in 1923 on the sixth largest island, Sado Island, which is in Niigata Prefecture on the western coast of Japan. And 1923 doesn't sound that long ago, uh, but it's almost a hundred years ago now, which is kind of like, whoa, right? 
But the thing about Japan is it was isolated from the rest of the world until the end of the Edo period in around 1868. And it didn't really become modernized until around the very beginning of the 1900s, around like 1905, 1906. And what needs to stick in your mind is that Japan is a very mountainous country. It's very difficult to travel through. You can't just make roads and things like you do anywhere else. And while Japan today is, in your mind, maybe a very, very modern country with some of the, or previously the fastest rail lines in the world, giant towering skyscrapers, and, and if you go to like Akihabara, they have all the, the anime goods and the flashing billboards and things like that. If you go to rural Japan, even more rural than where I am, that's still pretty rare. There are still pockets in this country where modernity is not very common. And in 1923, the modern electrical kind of world really hadn't spread much past the big, big economic centers like Osaka, Kyoto, and Tokyo. You weren't seeing electrical lighting and air cons and, and things like that anywhere really in Japan except in these big modern cities. So for Kajiwara, when he was born in 1923 in this small island that's so far removed from any of the big cities, he still would have been growing up in kind of a pre-modern Japan. He would have been dealing with extraordinarily hot and humid summers and really freezing cold winters, and there would have been nothing but stars in the sky at night. So this is really the dawn for Japan of the modern era around this time. And so it's not a surprise that on this island, far removed from any big city, Kajiwara grew up in a semi-pre-modern kind of cloister you could think of. Uh, Sado Island is famous for its gold mine, if that gives you any kind of idea of what kind of rural area you're dealing with. And for Kajibata himself, he was one of seven children, and he learned Go from his father. His father was an amateur, a strong amateur, I believe, around one don or two don. And Kajibata showed quite a lot of promise from early childhood, really early childhood. We're talking six or seven. So he was a, a genius kind of from the start in the vein of Kurahara Shusaku and all these other prodigies from the past. Kajiwara wasn't just some random person. He showed an affinity for the game from a very early age. And his father was well off enough, even with seven children, to be able to send Kajiwara to Tokyo. And he did this when Kajiwara was, I do believe eight, maybe nine years old. And the family up and moved to Tokyo. And Kajiwara was lucky enough to be moved, his family moved to a residence that was right next to a future Honimbo, Sakiyama Riichi. In fact, the first Honimbo that was not hereditary was Sakiyama Riichi. So a soon to be very famous and very important Go player. At that time, uh, when he met Kajiwara, he was only a six down professional which is still rather impressive, but he had not hit his peak of power yet. And lucky enough for Kajiwara, his family ended up moving right next to a future Honimbo who became his teacher. It seems like fortune was completely on Kajiwara's side as a child. He grew up in a rural enough area where there were no distractions for him and his family, and he could be introduced to a game at that point that was becoming more and more rare. Even now, Go does not have, like the kids maybe know about Go, the elementary kids and the middle school kids, but they usually haven't played. And so for Kajiwara, it's kind of this blessing that he was born far away from any modern center where there are other things that might have attracted him. And then another double dose of blessings from the gods, when his family does move to this giant city, he ends up moving right next to a go master. And so the, the, you could, we could say that the, the table is set 
the board is ready. Everything's been put into motion. All Kajiwara has to do is start taking his steps up the ladder. But the first step ends up being one that's quite large. One of the first games we have is between Kajiwara and the legendary Honimbo Shusai. So I'll see you guys in the next course or in the next lesson. By the way, you can also watch these lessons on our platform, gomagic.org. Except there, you'll watch them with interactive quizzes right within the lessons and practical exercises right after them. And if you enjoy watching these Go videos and you don't want to miss others like this one, go smash that like button, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and this is Go Magic.